Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Strip Steak and Mushroom Risotto. Well today we tackle risotto, which out of the thousands of ways to prepare rice might be the greatest. And the concept, it's really genius but quite simple. You're going to take a short grain starch rich rice and cook it, constantly adding more hot liquid to it and agitating it all along the way until it becomes this creamy, magical rice dish. It's one of my favorite ways to eat rice and I'm excited to share it with you guys today. But today we're cooking on the Kamado Joe Kettle Joe. We're gonna start by getting this fired up. I'm gonna load up our lump charcoal. I'm gonna make a little bit of room here. Place some fire starters around here, get this lit up, and let this charcoal get hot. So now that that's taken off, we'll go ahead and close the lid up. We want to open the airflow all the way on the top and bottom. Now we've got just a little bit of knife work to do for our risotto, then we're going to move on to prepping the steak. So we're going to start with our portobello mushroom. We've got about eight ounces of mushroom here. We're just gonna dice this down. It's like a little quarter inch dice here. Now next we've got a shallot. We need about a quarter cup of diced shallot here. Mince this down fairly fine. And then we're gonna do a single clove of garlic, also just minced down nice and fine. Not gonna go nuts on this. I don't care if it has a little bit of texture inside the risotto. So we just need a single strip steak for what we're doing today. And I've chosen one of the most beautiful strip steaks I've ever seen. This is from Creekstone Farms, was cut from a full strip loin. It's had 45 days of wet age, but the marbling is really the star of the show. I mean, you just almost never see anything like that on Black Angus, but the marbling is what's really so beautiful about this steak in particular. I mean, you'd expect to see that on Wagyu, but Black Angus, that's about as good as it gets. So we're gonna season this with some of our California tri-tip. Uh, I've actually pulverized down this seasoning. It's usually nice and coarse, and I love how coarse it is for the most part, but I actually do this for my smash burgers too. I just don't, if you get big chunks, on a flat surface like a griddle cast iron you're gonna scorch them so I just bust this down in my spice grinder until it's super fine and just attaches to the meat melts right into it we're back at the grill now we're gonna go ahead and get a 10 inch skillet on here preheating as well as a quart of chicken stock just sitting in a pot this is key you got to keep this hot as we're making the risotto. But before we get to the risotto, we're gonna sear our steak in this very skillet that we're gonna make the risotto. That way we can possibly get a little bit of fond, a little bit of flavor on the bottom of this skillet. All right, our skillet's nice and hot. We're gonna come in with the strip steak. Don't need any fat down because there's so much fat right here in the steak. You can see our stock keeping nice and hot back here. We're getting some bubbles going. We want to get a really good sear on here. So we're getting some fat rendered out here. We're going to go ahead and give this a flip. Oh yeah, get some nice color on there. We're going to bring this up to about 120. I'm right in the center now. So that means that we've got to bring the bottom side up, which means we don't want to close the lid on this at this point because we've only got about seven degrees to go. All right, we've got a great crust going on both sides. Come up to temperature, we're gonna pull this off now. We're just gonna rest it on some foil, but we're gonna leave all that goodness behind and start to build our risotto here in this skillet. So we're gonna start by adding just a little bit more fat to the skillet with a tablespoon of butter. And before we get into the actual rice, we're gonna cook down our shallots and our mushrooms. The so shallots can go in first. Yeah, and as we're cooking this down, we're going to definitely get this wooden spoon across this cast iron to scrape up any of this fond. Those are the 
little flavor bits stuck to the skillet from the steak. We'll go ahead and add in our portobello. And get all that kind of coated in the fat. Yeah, it soaks it right up. But of course, mushrooms just full of water, so as they start to warm up and cook down, they're gonna release some of that liquid, and we'll see that here shortly. All right, so our mushrooms are looking really nice. We've got some good browning on them, cooked down, softened up. I'm gonna take these out of the skillet now. We'll return them here in a little bit, but I wanna get a good toast on our rice before we start adding our stock to the risotto. So we wanna take this out of here for now. We're gonna hit this with a tablespoon or so of olive oil. And then I've got two thirds of a cup of arborio rice. So this is that short grain rice that we talked about. I'm gonna spread it evenly across the surface. I wanna get it coated in that fat. And then we're just kinda of gonna to toast this to open things up. We haven't rinsed this rice. It's very important that you don't rinse this rice because all of the magic in this recipe happens because of the starch that's within and on this rice. And if we rinse it, we lose that. So we'll just give this a minute. You can already hear that sizzle, and that's what we want, just to toast these little grains of rice. So just a minute or two of toasting, and then we're gonna add about a quarter cup of dry white wine. Now I want this rice to start to absorb what it can of this wine and otherwise it's just going to reduce down and once it's pretty much not visible anymore we're ready to move on. So wine is gone. We're going to add in our garlic. We'll just give that about 30 seconds before we start adding our warm chicken stock. And as soon as that rice becomes aromatic, I'm smelling it now ready to start putting some stock in here. And we're just gonna ladle in a couple ladles at a time here. This is kind of the uh, the tough part about a risotto is now you're gonna stand here and you're gonna stir and you're gonna stir and you're gonna stir until all of that stock is absorbed and then we're gonna do it all over again until the rice is softened and or that stock is gone. So that first addition's already gone, but check out, you see these streaks down here on the skillet? That's all that starch. That's what's, what's gonna make our risotto so creamy. Let's do it again. You can see just how creamy this has gotten, how much those grains of rice have plumped up. I'm gonna get a little taste here, because really what we're looking for is the doneness. Oh, it's so close. It's still got a bit of bite to it, which is great. We want a little bit of that. But I'm gonna say one more round so that we have a little bit of extra like creaminess in the bottom. We're not gonna let it soak it all up. And then we're gonna finish this off by bringing back our mushrooms, making sure our seasoning's on point. We're gonna finish it with a little bit of cheese and butter. So we're just about there. This could tighten up just a little bit, but before we do that, we wanna get our mushrooms back in here so they can warm back up. And we're gonna hit it with a little bit of seasoning as well, just right back to that California tri-tip. The great steak seasoning, which means all around great savory flavors, are gonna work really nicely in this risotto. At this point, I feel like these mushrooms, they're gonna warm up here really quick and we can just kinda of take this off of here and we'll finish it off of the heat. So while this is still plenty hot, I'm gonna get one more tablespoon of butter in here. Let that melt in. This just adds a, a bit of richness to the mouth feel here at the end. And then finally, we're gonna finish it off with a little bit of Pecorino Romano. And this should make things tighten up a bit, but still be super creamy. Oh, 
Oh man, it's so creamy and delicious. It's earthy from the mushrooms. Just a little bit of that peppery kick from the tri-tip, but the texture is insane. Soaked up all of that chicken stock flavor. It's really delicious. Let's plate some up with that steak. So the steak has been resting, left some juices behind. And those are gonna go right into our risotto. Then we get this thing sliced up and plated. We better taste test this as well. Wow. So tender. Really juicy as well. I mean, the last 20 minutes or so, it's had plenty of time to rest and redistribute those juices. Fantastic. So for what we've made today, I'd say this is either two entree portions or four side portions. So we would call that right there one entree. Now this is a great entree year round, but especially in these cooler months. But even more so, I think serving up a risotto like this at your holiday dinner is sure to impress. But thanks so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments, or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below. And let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made.